for anyone who designs or loves fashion, Paris is like huge. It's like the Mount Everest of fashion. We contacted stores before we left and set up appointments and that was kind of the scariest part because, you know, they don't know us from anything or for a can of paint. And... To show your clothes in Paris to buyers and have such a good reception, well, it makes you feel like you can be in that same level of, you know, the world of fashion. You do things when you feel like you're ready for them, and I guess it took us a while to feel like we were ready mm -hmm. to do it. Each on our own, we went off and collected enough experience and skills before we felt we were ready. I guess it's later in life than I would have preferred or <laughs> Kirk would have preferred, but it's it's just it's just good that we actually did it. You know, we thought Oh, it's so easy to do a collection. You just have to draw a sketch and get some fabric together, you know, throw it out there. And it's still not easy. It wasn't easy when we started, you know. It was, our first two collections didn't really sell. Yeah. It was a learning tool for us. You know, the first five years, you're not making money. The following five years, you know, from five to ten, you're just establishing your brand. fabric, we yeah. sewed it, we sold it. We were working out of Stephen's apartment. I think that's a really huge challenge, is not having a capital. Even though you sell a lot, you've got to be able to pay for your next sale. You see you're making money, but it all goes right back into the business. So we are still entrepreneurs. We have creativity for a business, especially in fashion. You're not going to get very far. Do you know what I mean? You can do a simple t-shirt collection, but I don't think you can get that creative with a t-shirt. When it comes to forecasting, we always have our own kind of takes on things, as well as, you know, knowing what's going on mm -hmm. in the trend cycles of things, too. I take some of those things into account. You know, you pick and you choose which trends you want to focus on and which ones you just want to abandon entirely. I can't force things. If there's a trend that I really like and I think I can expand on, then I'll go with it. Creativity sells the brand, but you're gonna have to have a good product also. If you're doing all these creative things, you know, great, but you're not gonna be doing it for long exactly. in that business. Unless you have something like a perfume or accessories to fall back on, yeah. or in a good investor, lots of money, then you can do whatever you want. We've already established our DNA, our look. You know, there's a Greta Constantine look. And we thought if we applied that to something that was more accessible, then it would be more wide reaching, it would sell better. We're known as being dress designers, but we're also learning that we have to be able to do separate pants, tops, you know, jackets and stuff like that in order to make it more, more appealing to yes. customers. As a designer, now you need a certain amount of exposure. You need a lot of exposure. It's just part of the game. You have to mm -hmm. you have to know how to deal with all the media. The media can help you and it can hurt you. You don't want bad press, obviously, but like they say, you know, any press is good press. So we throw certain parties, we do certain things so that not just to be in the papers and stuff. It's just, it's part of fashion. Fashion should be fun. If you take it too seriously, then, you know, I don't see you surviving much, like very long. You know, it's, it's always fun to do collaboration. You get to meet new people, you get to be more creative. Sometimes you get to do things that you don't do on a regular basis. In doing these collaborations, we always want to partner with like-minded brands. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it even has to be in fashion. We want to be the best at what we're doing. 
And so we will partner with companies that, in our minds, are the best at what they do also. And in that way, it kind of elevates us. With our collection, we measure success really in two ways. There's the success of it in sales and reviews and how it's met by the masses, media, everything like that. And then there's the other part, which is the success of it in our own mind. And looking back at collections, you can say, ooh, you know, you do have moments of we really put that on the runway, or there's moments that, that really look great on the runway. You do kind of know if it's a successful collection because it's already been sold. It maybe have already even been worn by celebrities and shot by magazines. You already have an idea of not just, you know, if it's a successful collection, but you already know what within that collection, like, oh, this is your best style and mm -hmm. this is the most popular color for next season. I think anything in life can fail. Me personally, I don't think of failure, but you do think of things can happen that can cause you to fail. Because if you're gonna think failure all the time, you might as well just close down your business or whatever you do. You should strive to only be the best that you can be and only hope the best and work the hardest. And sometimes you just need to sit down, be quiet, learn something, ask a lot of questions, go into the stores and see how things are displayed. You know, do your research. Put that all together and form your business, but don't be so eager to go out on the runway to have your five minutes of fame and, you know, without even checking if your clothes fit properly or, you know, if a fabrication is the best fabrication. And, you know, it's not just, you know, shits and giggles as you always say. <laughs> Step by step, we do what we want to do. We do what we love doing. We kind of know the big picture. We know how to get to that big picture. And I think that's what makes us, if I can use the word, successful. As long as we're growing, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm happy.